five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? I'm Judge James. I'm Judge Evie. This is Living for Crits. Yes, it is. And it's a special week special and a special week. show because we're very unprepared and there's like I'm talking about. barely any show notes. But to this week, February 10th, I'm off camera. Is the one year anniversary since the opening of the the uh, the the Dungeon Tavern, the Walls Dungeon Tavern. There you go. Right. That's better. So if you didn't know, this time last year we had we were moving into this house, into this awesome game room, and maybe just a little bit thinking, is there going to really be a pandemic or not? And guess what? There was. There, there was. was a pandemic. Surprise! Yay! High five. High five. Pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun to go back. I'm going to change change the mic a little bit there. It's fun to go back and to look a little to see the videos as they progressed. It's also very depressing in some ways, but we've made it. We're we're a year further. Uh, Keith said it's Family Day weekend. That's Canada, right? Yeah, it's just Keith in Canada. Yeah, that's duh. Family Day weekend. That's instead of President's Day, they have Family Day, I guess, because presidents they don't have presidents in Canada. That's true. Up, oh, up, here oh comes. We got some tea. What is this tea? You mocked it, so I'm. Is this the turmeric it. ginger tea? Ginger peach. Is it turmeric peach. ginger peach? Yeah. And what no, do you it's have? Ginger peach turmeric. Those All right, peach. ginger peach turmeric. Nothing Ooh. like an earthy tea. <laughs> we hope this is good. <laughs> Keith's got some English breakfast tea going on over there. Even though it's not breakfast. I mean, it's always breakfast in Canada. Anywho, we don't have the best uh, structure for tonight's show. We just thought we'd celebrate with some chatter. Yep. And everything. And here, we can show Spencer And around. we were going to make a big pile of all the different games we played this year. And the pile is less big than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah. all right. Spencer in the pile. We can talk about it, though. All right, there's Spencer. Spencer can sit up there. Oh my God, is that a heart on his foot? So let's move he over. He loves the dungeon. Tavern. Let's move over to the the Judge Evie presides. Thank goodness, that's gonna save our the show. The segment of the show where you can send mm -hmm. your questions to dccjudgeevie at gmail dot com. Yes, that's And Judge Evie may or may not read your question in a weird voice. That one, that one, and. That's the wrap. Okay. We have so a wrap? We have a wrap and then we have a, is, it, is it a wrap from Greg? Yeah. Oh my god. We have gosh. a wrap All right. and then a comment from Greg and two questions. All right. Well, let's, let's really embrace the questions since we have nothing we have else nothing. to talk about tonight except for questions and then mm -hmm. the games we played. Mm -hmm. Is it a rap battle? It's a wrap. Not a rap battle because we'll be able to be rapping. Well, she'll be rapping and I'll be doing the... Yeah. Yeah. Not like okay. that though. Uh, this is from Brian, so, hello, hi, Judge Evie and Judge J. Questions for judges. What is this voice? <laughs> I don't know. Is this Billie Eilish? No, it's not Billie Eilish. I don't know. She's not talk like that. All right, whatever. Apparently, there is a lot of talk about zines for RPGs. Right now, and Zine Quest. Do you have any favorite zines you read and use for DCC or other games? Question mark. Okay. That's a question. It's a good question. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. We have a question from Keith, too. We'll do this question first, though. Is there any question? No, still. Okay. Right. Um, I have a favorite zine. Yeah, same. Yeah, do you? What's your zine, Evie? Um, I'm not going to tell you. You tell me. What's your favorite zine, Evie? Well, the zines are What's like, your favorite magazine? They're like the gaming magazine. What's right? your favorite magazine? Same thing. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Sure. Or the zines that like adventure people write. Whatever you want to do. 
I don't know which one it is. My favorite zine, uh, probably, is oh crap, that's that's tough. All right, so I really like Crawl Jammer, and I know it's kind of a classic zine, and I like Crawl, also a classic zine, and I like Crawling Under a Broken Moon, also a classic zine, and there's so many new zines coming out, but those are probably some of my favorites. I really like DCC Vehicle Mayhem, which is kind of in a zine Is format. that the one that we played? I like <laughs> yeah. that one. <coughs> That's like by uh, uh, Jonathan Snodgrass, so I'm <coughs> choking on spit. That's unfortunate. <coughs> So, I don't know. I think maybe DCC Vehicle Mayhem like is my favorite. Yep. Oh, oh, for, for several reasons. One, because it's, it's a really trucks, fun way you know? to yeah. experience DCC and or MCC. And it's, it's, it's just matchbox cars running around killing each other. I know there's that, there's that uh, Gaslands game, but this is a DCC vibe to it. So, I gotta, that's what I'm going to say. Judge Evie, read the next question. What are you, what are you futzing with? To, to answer uh, Keith's question, yes. No. I have watched WandaVision, and I'm up to date. No, I have not. And Eli and Jen have watched with me. Evie has not. It's Jen prefers it. Jen likes it more than I do, because I think it's okay. But it's not like it's... It's okay. Okay. Have you run any DCC games or campaigns? That have taken your players from fantasy setting to sci-fi with the same characters like old school expedition to barrier peaks. I'm back in newly blue Georgia. Stay safe, guys. Cheers. You see newly blue, newly blue Georgia? Yeah. I love that. It's awesome. Woo. Blue Georgia. Woo. Um, so I have. Uh, and and speaking of crawling under a broken moon, when I ran a DCC campaign for the Norwin Game Nights back in Pittsburgh, our campaign started like a regular DCC game, but then went post-apocalyptic with crawling under a broken moon. After we took part in, oh crap, what was the what was the the adventure? The adventure Frozen in Time. So we had Frozen in Time, and that transitioned to a a some 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 post-apocalyptic. That was the one that was. Lego, Lego, Legolas. I didn't play in these. You weren't in that? That's right, because you yeah. were, Eli was, you weren't, because you were running games. You were running the Thank You Evil. Mm-hmm. Okay. It I was fun. I hear about Legolas. So. It was fun. Good times. Good questions. Next. Next question. So this one, um. That's a funky tea. I'm sorry. I'm a fan of turmeric. Like, two spices I put into everything I cook. And usually it's for both for color and because of just like the depth of flavor is I like to use turmeric and paprika. Like the combination of both those things, a lot of my food gets turmeric and paprika. And then there's a combination of other spices that might go in. Like I'm trying to go for more of like, you know, an Indian flavor. It might get like, uh, you know, garam masala or curry powder uh, and cinnamon. If I'm going for more of an Italian flavor, obviously Italian spices and different varieties, oregano, whatever. But turmeric and, chili and paprika go into everything I make. But man, turmeric does not go in hot tea. That's just... Oh, it doesn't? Have you tried it? Oh, yeah. You're going to love it. I, I look at Greg's comment. Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know. So, let's just see here. I don't know how to respond to this one here. I don't think it's a question. I think it's a good comment, though. Okay. Yeah, so, it's a comment. All right. So uh, Greg says, also, as three white people who rap about magic items, we should acknowledge that of gratitude American music owes to African-American culture, gospel, blues, jazz, soul, rock, and hip-hop that all have roots there. And that is a really great point, Greg, especially, you know, being that it's like Black History Month and stuff. Yeah. And now I wish I read this and was, like, more prepared to talk about this than I actually am right now, you know? But yeah, and we we probably butcher this somewhat. I hope it, no one oh, like, yeah. takes any offense to how we butcher the the rap battle thing we do. You know, the, the, but you know, definitely, I think that uh, there have been. I'd say we stand the shoulders of giants, but we stand the shoulders of of, of people that definitely uh, have done much. We we we've brought nothing to the table with uh, <laughs> with our rap battles, of course. Mm -hmm. So, but excellent point, Greg, especially right now. Next question. 
We go right from that right into the rap battle. Man, or the <laughs> rapping. No, I'm going to rap battle. It's called Holy Forking Shirt. Okay. I feel like we should have had our little monologue there before, pro like after this. You know, yeah, maybe. Because now I feel like, like, now we're using Holy Forking Shirt. All right, let's. Let's do this, I guess. Oh, no. You ready? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Holy fucking shirt. Say it with me, because you'll get hurt. If you diss me while I'm wearing this vest, if you put me to the test, you will not feel so blessed. Ride off into the west. The garment I wear splits my spell like a tear. That's tear, not tear. So a blast that hits one now divides without care. I hit both A and B, so soon you will see. Two smoldering mo mo moans, mounds, where you both in. Wait, wait. Two smoldering mounds, where both you and he used to be. <laughs> there we go. I didn't know. Thank you, Greg. I think he didn't mean for you to say that's tear, not tear. I don't oh. think that was meant for you to say that part. <laughs> it's like me reading, like, person enters room off like, That's not bad, though, for the first time you had read it, right? Yeah. Not bad. That's the last question? All right, so if you have future questions, comments, whatever, please send them to dccjudgeevy at gmail.com. Um, Is that how to do? Yeah, go ahead and try this ginger peach turmeric tea. Is it too hot for me? I mean, I don't know. I don't like ginger tea, so I mean, it's probably bad. You're going to love it. Oh, I like peach, though. Is it truly, really, is it too hot for me? Just just try it. Is it too hot, though? I don't, then put it down. I'm too scared. I'm I thought that something we could do. I was gonna put a post on on Twitter about this, and I, and I took it down because it didn't make much sense. But I was, and this is like stacked backwards now. Uh, here, I'm gonna move these aside here. Move that here. So I, I was looking back a year, and a year ago, I was the only campaign I had going on was a Shadow of the Demon Lord campaign that I ran once a week on Sunday mornings from 7 a.m to 10 a.m. every single Sunday. And I'd get up and I'd work out. I'd go to the gym on Saturdays at six in the morning. Oh. And then I'd walk to the gym in our apartment complex. And then I'd come back and before Jen was up, I'd have had a smoothie, um, you know, and I would be running Shad the Demon Lord. Mm -hmm. And it was my first Demon Lord campaign. It was very dark. It was very bleak. I really enjoy, I love this system, by the way. I mean, I will come back to this system at some point. And I thought, you know, now, uh, what I'm doing now, at least on my side, is I'm running a Numenera game on every Sunday. But the game I can, I'm super geeked about is that I'm, like again, running an alternative campaign. So I may have to do an alternative show at some point. But no, because then I can't talk Without about you. It. Do it on, like, a Thursday. Okay, maybe. Um, so a lot's changed on that front. Um, and I thought we could talk about the games that we played this year and our thoughts on the campaigns we've had with them. Mm -hmm. And really, for us, that only equals to be DCC. And you didn't play in... What didn't you play in? You didn't play in Ryutama. That wasn't you, right? Nope. I played this. It was very Ryutama-ish. Did you not like it? I didn't like it. Oh, dang. <laughs> and I ran Savage Worlds this year. You played Savage. We played Savage Worlds this yeah. year. Yeah. we can talk about that. And did you play Numenera with us? No? I did. I'll move it over here. Actually, you know what? Before we see anything, before we talk about these games, um, let's do this. I want to do something first. And I made this okay. comment when I was sharing this video last week. And I did some looking. And I think one thing we can celebrate, like for real celebrate here on Living for Crits, wow. uh, especially after being a year in Dungeon Tavern, is I think we are the longest running, uh, most prolific father-daughter 
we've done the most. Father daughter tabletop RPG show. Yeah. I can't think of any other. Are there other tabletop RPG shows or streams out there that I'm not thinking of? And if so, do they have like 50 some or 60 some or 70 some episodes? How many do we have? We have a lot. We've been doing this for almost two years. It's two years this spring we've been doing Living for Crits. Like we've well, been we've de- the channel's been. For... The channel's six years old, but to have you and me doing this. That's sweet. Well, that's so even cheap. older. Uh, are you the only? I, I I mean I can't. Are there any other father daughter shows? Like I'm trying to. Th- I I personally think that that's a big deal. We lost a viewer when I said that. Someone. Why are you drifting off camera? I don't know. How about you come back on camera? I'm just moving around. There we I go. can't help where my moving takes me. But yeah, I think we're. Are we the only? We might be the only. Which is kind of sad, but kind of cool that, you know, we're here. We're cool like that. And and doing our thing. But if there are any others that we don't know about, let us know. We'd be very interested to see what they do that we don't do. They probably cover Dungeons and Dragons. Which we really don't cover Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. Instead, let's talk about the three games we have played together this year. And let's start with the one that we played the most of, Dude, probably. You forgot Lankmar. That's... That's that's here. That's in DCC. In there, but it is DCC. That, the Did we play the most DCC this year? Or did we play more Fantasy Age this year? I don't play much Fantasy. I might have played we'll get, more DCC. We'll, we'll, we'll come back. To, no, I think you play more Fantasy Age this year. Well, because I played all the games with DCC and that's ran right. My own. The DCC RPG. Obviously, we played a ton of this this year because it's DCC RPG. It's a lot of what we do. So what were your yeah. what were your thoughts on DCC in 2020, 2021, like the last year? What are your thoughts? How how do you, you feel like you had a fulfilling experience at DCC? Yeah, sure. How is your DCC campaigning going? Next question. Um, <laughs> I don't think we need to bring that up. I think is it not just, is it not going? I think we should just move on to the next topic. I think I want to know what you're doing with gaming. No, I think I'm gonna take the sip of this tea now. Well, crap, kid. We gotta get you gaming. So, you doing any gaming right now? You're in no gaming. Oh, that's not a game. That's just that's just groaning at tea. Not a game. It tastes like fried rice. We played Savage Worlds this year. You, you played some Savage Worlds, right? Yeah. We played with uh, what? One session? Two sessions? Maybe we like three. Maybe three sessions of this with e- East Texas University. This is just going to be you sipping tea. I don't understand it. It tastes like fried rice, but then ends with weird peach. Right? I think it tastes like fried rice only because there's two things in there that are in my fried rice, which is turmeric she also had a and, and ginger. Because I put ginger in my fried rice. I already ate a huge chunk of ginger today. You did. Accident. And so now you're bad. drinking it. It was so bad. Can I try to tell them? I want to tell them. Go ahead, tell them. We have nothing. We have, yeah, okay. So we were, we were eating vegetables, guys. And I was like, oh, I wonder what this is. And I took it. And it was like this big. And it was just a hunk of ginger. I mean, there's more to this story than just you eating ginger. There was the whole fact that I made a special vegetable stir fry. You did? I did. That was a that was vegetable stir fry. And I was going to put ginger powder in it, and instead I put some pickled ginger in it. That's what that was? But I didn't There's realize so the pickled ginger it. stuck together. So there was just one bite of pickled ginger going around, and you got the bite. <laughs> I'm sorry. It wasn't my fault. No, but didn't eat anything it wasn't else my... with it either. The rest of it tasted like ginger, and you just had a lot of ginger. Fantasy Age. You played Fantasy Age. A lot of Fantasy Age this year. This was the Tavern Tale game. This was pretty cool. We had fun with this. Hmm. Remember? Do you remember Fantasy Age? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you enjoy Fantasy Age? Yeah, I liked Fantasy Age. Now we have the moderns. Yeah, we did get Modern Age. Um, It's super modern. Well, I mean, I got Modern Age for a couple reasons. The first was I was reading through the Expanse RPG, and I read how... um, I read in how the Expanse RPG, uh, if you want to have, like, any kind of psionics or something like that, it would essentially come from, uh, you can get it out of the modern age. The second reason I got modern age, and I don't know how I'm gonna pull this off, 
But as you can see, Judge Evie, whether she knows it or not, is uh, has become a big fan of Criminal Minds. And I was trying to figure out how I could do some kind of like uh, modern police procedural, like where you guys like work for a, a like a like the a crime. FBI. Cr it would be its own thing. It would be its own thing. The IBS. We would do something like that. The IBS, the irritable bowel syndrome. No, the IBF. FBI. I wanted to do something with Evie, which would be Criminal Minds, like that sort of thing. I could so, play Mandy Patinkin. You could play Mandy <laughs> Patinkin. Uh, but I know that Evie likes modern games, and I felt that maybe I, I started reading through Modern Age, and I really like the fact that with Modern Age, you can, uh, what? I you excited by this, or is this? Yeah. We need to fit, we need to pull, figure the group out for this, obviously, because... Mm. This needs to be like the spec. We have to get our cool criminal minders in. What's who's the cool criminal minders? Well, I only have two friends. Who are your watch. two friends that watch criminal minds? Maggie and Lucy. Well, I mean, this is a possibility, but um, you know, maybe this will this will be something that works out with us playing a criminal mind style, like Mandy, where there's there's crazy crimes. You just have to find them and figure them out. So that's what I'm working on right now. So for Evie. So, but I, I, I got, you know, kicked off and I want to do it because we really, I really like Fantasy Age. I think Fantasy Age was my big surprise game of the, of the year of how much I liked the system. Um, you know, I, I, I knew I was going to like Shadow the Demon Lord. I really wanted to play something that was, I was fantasy that wasn't your, it wasn't D&D. &D, and I wanted something that wasn't dark and bleak. And I really liked your Tavern Tale game. I think the, it was. We had the challenge that, you know, you guys weren't learning the stunt system for me. I knew the stunts. You, yeah, you knew the stunts. Yeah. And that was about it. John knew the stunts. John knew the stunts. We got to six players, though, too, right? Did we have six players at one point? One, two. Who's, who's messaging? People in my acting group oh. chat. Anyway, I'll let you know how that goes yeah, I so. if I put that together for Evie and if we're going to have like our own police procedural cop drama game. Uh, let's see. I've been thinking about playing some CNC as Castles and Crusades, right? But the Fantasy Age system is good. I, I really like it. I, I just think it's the it's perfect so amount of crunch. It's very easy to, to manage. Um, I love it for the Expanse. I mean... I think it is a phenomenal job with the expanse, but the, you know, the, the, it's like just enough crunch, but not too crunchy system wise, but it's very customizable too. You okay? Yes. Now I don't know if our, if our, uh, our police procedural type game, if it's going to be something where I'm able to, uh, to make it like a fantasy thing or a sci-fi little sci-fi toss in there, maybe they're being something where there's like you guys are investigating alien abductions also like x files remember x files no from the 90s remember the 90s yeah it was i i love the 90s really really remember it well i did cyberpunk already i think i have to do something that's in the modern like modern times we did cyberpunk we did uh what did we do we did uh our, our dcc x crawl campaign with cyberpunk so yeah. Well, that's what we got going on. So we'll see where that goes. But uh, yeah, dudes, alternative. I mean, this is this game. Hi, alternative. This game is this game is sweet. Hi. Stop so. saying hi back. Hi, Evie. I'm alternative. I'm a whole book of art by our kid post. Hey, Troy, what's up? Hi. So let's 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 go to the wrap. We're gonna wrap things up here. We didn't talk about some of the games though. We did. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. Oh, we did. We did. Yeah. The thing is, we didn't play that many systems this year. Like we played. I did. I have a counter. I'm gonna say what we played here. Hold on. I played five I know. this year. Did you? Yeah, but like not this year. Like last January. So like. You played five E last January. Mm-hmm. Not this January. Last yeah, January. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, with John. At John's house. I have pictures. I have a count here. It might have been February. I have I a don't count. Know. So here's the count. I know that in the last that last year 
Where's last year? Uh, last year, for me, in 2021, I... That's not 2021. That's the wrong, that's the wrong thing. You have so many Here it is. I lost spreadsheets. In 2021... Or 2020, I I was in I ran or played in 45 games of Dungeon Crawl Classics, 22 games of Shadow of the Demon Lord, 14 games of Fantasy Age, five games of Savage Worlds, five games of the Cipher System or Numenera, three Ryutama games, and one uh, Swords of the Serpentine game. That's a lot of games. That was 99, 95 total sessions. And so far in this year, uh, ah, so far this year, as of today, uh, I've played one game of DCC. <laughs> uh, I've played like one, two, three, three games of Numenera. And I've played one, two, three games of Alternity. It's only been a month, though, a month and a half. So I've got, well, like, pretty good. seven games isn't bad. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have, like, a tracker. I have games I want to play. Like, I want to play the Dune RPG when that comes out and stuff. I have all these charts. I'm not sharing them with the screen right now because I'm going to do that. so many. But I have so many charts of, like, the books I've read. Like, I knew I just finished A Fool and His Money today. And last week I read uh, the Nightclave, and I read I read uh, the Expanse RPG book before that. I read which Nemesis. one was the scary one? What, scary what? The book. The scary that book that you read. Which scary book? That you didn't want to read. That was like recent. That was just bad. Yeah. I'm not gonna say which book I didn't like. Oh. Okay, we're just gonna talk about that. I, it was a book I've read in the last two months I haven't liked at all, but I'm not gonna share it because. That's, yeah, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. Um, and I track what video games I've played. So, anyway, Troy's played nothing for 11 and a half months. Troy, you gotta get, you gotta get some gaming in. What? You gotta, we gotta hook you up. I think you've had reasons why I haven't been playing, but you gotta get some reasons to play. I'll, yeah. I'll play with you, man. You know? I, I, I was gonna do a demo tomorrow of The Expanse, and I just didn't because, um, I decided I want to paint miniatures, I think, instead. <laughs> I have a bunch of minis back here. Is that a snail? What is that picture of? That's a dude's hand on his head. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's like. I don't know what that was. It's like this. Anyway, well, we're gonna we're gonna keep but spawn a Cyclops Con's coming up, so. Oh yeah, I forgot about that's that. That's gonna. I think I have an empty seat at one of my games too. Let me see. Let me broadcast this out to the universe here. Here, table, top events. I'll tell everyone what, what's open. Log in, log in, because I have two sessions of. Uh, of, of events for Spawn of Cyclops Con. And I think that one, yeah, one is open. So if anyone out there wants to play with me at Spawn of Cyclops Con on Sunday at 9 a.m., that's the 28th, my 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Neon Knights 2037 game now has an open seat because Brian had to jump out. So uh, there's one, I'm, it's only five players. I'm keeping it kind of tight so that we everyone gets a good time, has a good time to play. It's not like no one's talking over each other because I think six players is tough online. And if you want to play, uh, just you know register for Spawn Cyclops Con and take that ticket. And there's other events too that are out there. I know Will Keller, he's got a few events he's looking for players for. And it's going to be a good time. My game, Neon Knights 2037, is essentially the Neon Knights Adventure of Brandon LaSalle, but with the Cyber Sprawl Classics uh, overlay of rules. So you're going to play as, like, it's in a, a cyberpunk Delco. A cyberpunk Philadelphia that's being invaded by, like, mutant kids. Aliens. Yeah. That. Yeah. It's going to be cool. I think I pretty much just covered our road crew shoutouts through that part. Though, yeah. and the Kickstarter shoutouts is Zine Quest Three is out, and like I said last week, there's some uh, one I want to mention is the Zine Three Pack of Futuristic Post Apocalypse and Fantasy, which is Don Stroud and James Pozzanel Jr. So that's pretty cool, and something that is uh, is is coming out soon. I know I'm, well, I can't talk about it. I'm I've got 
my next Globe I'm recording this weekend with Mark coming up on the 20th. I can't share that because it's a surprise of who we have a special interview guest we'll be interviewing. Someone official. Cool. Special. Special. We're going to wrap this up. Everyone, be safe, be healthy, be kind. And what I'm going to say. Oh my God, we didn't do our find us. Where to find us. Oh yeah, where to find Tell them where to find oh, us. Oh yeah, at I Live for Crits on Twitter. Living for Crits on Instagram. And search Living for Crits on YouTube. And I'm going to say. I trying to reach up there. Come be my demon lord. What? I don't know why. I just think you shout the demon lord. I don't know. You say something. Spencer. Good night, everybody. Bye.